I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 25 years from Kenneth Hagin Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagin. Hello and welcome to Rama Praise. Today, I'm talking about don't let the devil manipulate you or maybe another word be influence. I don't know. But, uh, you know, in many instances, people and situations often influence us, but it's coming from the wrong spirit. Yes. It's the spirit of the world and not the spirit of, of God. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the biggest in, in manipulator or influencer in our lives today is fear. Yes. There is so much fear in the world. Fear, you know, <laughs> they're afraid of this. They're afraid of that. They're, they get a little bump, uh, lump and they say, oh, I got cancer. Yes. And and they hear stuff on the news and they're so afraid that people get so afraid that they won't even go out of their house. Yes. And, you know. Afraid of food almost. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it, these things is what the enemy is using to manipulate you so yes. that you don't enjoy life. And he said that he has come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Yes. And it's not abundant when you're when you're in being fear. in fear or are having these things come against you and you're not combating it with the word of God. And that's why I'm saying don't let these things or the devil, it's all coming from the enemy, the devil himself, manipulate you or influence you into fear into doing things yes. that you normally shouldn't do, but stay with the Word of God. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Stay with what the Word of God says, yes. you know. In fact, after the storm that the, the disciples and Jesus were in, mm -hmm. he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it you have no faith, he said. <laughs> the question we're asking today, where's your faith? Don't be fearful. Yes. Use your faith in what God said, and you'll see a victory. Let's go now where I'm talking about. Don't let the devil manipulate you. 2 Peter 3, run. I'm going to start out by reading. Sometimes I start out with an introduction, some, but the, today I'm going to start out by reading some scripture to start with. All right. 2 Peter 3, 1 in the NLT says, This is my second letter to you, dear friends, and both of them I've tried to stimulate your wholesome thinking and refresh your memory. Now, Peter... In his writings, he was always saying, in fact, he said in one place, as long as he was alive, I'm going to paraphrase it, that he was going to keep reminding his, his constituents of all of these things. And that's what he's saying again here in Second Peter. Now, the J.B. Phillips New Testament says it like this. I have tried to stimulate you as men or people with minds uncontaminated by error, by simply reminding you of what you really already know. And so this morning, I'm going to remind you of some things that we've already been taught and heard. But I just want to encourage you and to stir, stir up these truths that you already know. In the world we live in today, there are many voices that are saying something to try to get our attention. And these voices want to gain an entry into our lives so that they can motivate us. You know, I've noticed that some people, <laughs> you talk to them, they don't really know why or have a reason or why they're saying or believing something, they just simply tape whatever some voice says to them from the TV or somewhere else, never check it out, they just take it for the truth. You know, 
Any, any of you ever seen, now I'm not talking about where they got the hand puppet, but the old puppet shows where there would be somebody with manipulating the puppet from up, anybody ever seen that? You know, an unseen person was manipulating the puppet. In real life, there are unseen forces or people that are trying to manipulate you all the time. Every thing you see on the television, every advertisement, all of the news commentators and everybody are trying to manipulate you to their point of view or to go out and spend your money. Boy, it's getting real quiet in here now. So the title of this message is Don't Let the Devil Manipulate You. You say, well, why are you saying that to me? Well, we need to take an honest look. The reason I'm saying it, at, at what is influencing our thinking, what is influencing what we're saying, what is influencing what we're doing are our actions. I hope I've got your mind twirling right now because that's what I want to do. I want to get you in the mind to begin to think and stir you up. 1 Corinthians 2, 12. 1 Corinthians 2, 12 says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Because we have the Spirit within us, the Spirit of God, we don't have to be manipulated by the world. What they say or do, we don't have to respond to situations, crises, and trials the way the world does. It's sad when you see many Christians responding that way. We ought to have enough influence from the Spirit of God that would help us to realize that that's the wrong motivation, that's the wrong influence. Now, I want us to go to Luke's gospel, verse number, I mean, chapter number nine. And I want you to see something here. Starting with verse 51. Now it came to pass when the time had come for him to be received up that he set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. As they went, they entered a village of Samaritans to prepare for him, to prepare for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set for a journey to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, just as Elijah did? But he turned, now this is Jesus talking, he turned and rebuked them and said, now get this, you do not know what manner of spirit you're of. Now here is Lord, the Lord's disciples. And in one sense, we're the children of God. We, in one sense, the word, we are the Lord's disciples too. But if James and John could be influenced by the wrong spirit, we have to watch ourselves that the enemy doesn't do the same thing to us. I want to look at this here. You do not know what manner of spirit you're of. The evangelical heritage version says, you don't know what kind of spirit is influencing you. That's really what Jesus was saying. You don't know what kind of spirit. Now, he's speaking of a motivating force or spirit 
that influenced James and John's attitude here and their words even. The spirit that motivated them wanted to destroy the Samaritan people. But John 10.10 10 says, the purpose of the thief is to kill, steal, and destroy. So now when we compare what they are saying and what John, through Jesus said here, there is a vast difference. You can see that by the words that came out of their mouth, they were influenced by the wrong spirit. In fact, Jesus told them were because they wanted to destroy. Come on. They were being influenced wrongly. You know, in this world we live in, we come up with people and situations often influence us, but really it's, it's coming from the wrong spirit, the spirit of the world. The word clearly states here in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, that first clause, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. And then in the NLT it says it more plainly like it really should be translated, Satan who is the God of this world. So everything that's coming is actually coming from, God, from Satan who is manipulating people to fear, and they don't realize it. Do you understand right now that fear is one of the biggest things that's, being, that's in the world right now? Anybody ever notice that? People are fearful. But Satan is the one that's causing this, and many don't realize it. Even, even many Christians are being influenced and don't even realize it because of what they see and what they hear. Come on now. Oh, quiet today. Now I want you to get this. You, myself, your friend, your neighbor, your wife, your husband, all choose what will influence our lives. We choose what will influence our thoughts. We can choose what influences our attitudes. We can choose what influences the words that come out of our mouth. And we can choose what influences our actions. I know this is probably a little different than you've ever heard me teach, but this is really good. <laughs> Even if I say so, I occasionally get something that's good. But I think this is very appropriate for the times that we're living in. You know, we can either choose to yield to the influences that's being pushed at us from every angle that you want to look at. It's being pushed upon us. And actually, if we stop and think about it for a moment, that as one preacher called it, I don't know, that's, this was years and years and years and years ago when I Back when I was, you know, in high school myself, one preacher called the television the one-eyed demon. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, if you stop and think about it, what is happening in the world today 
with all of this ginger business and all of this kind of stuff, it, was, it has been pushed gradually, 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 gradually upon us until it has influenced the thinking of normal people. Hello. We cannot be so naive that we as Christians, that the enemy is not seeking to influence us. Sometimes by somebody quoting a scripture but taking it completely out of context and making it say something that it doesn't say. And now I'm going to walk where angels fear to tread, but that's what's happening with a lot of these people with these money, talking about money on the television. I get disgusted and turn it off. But, you know, trying to... I even heard a guy say here a while back, hey, this is what the Scripture said, so you go out and if you have to borrow it, borrow $100 and send it in here, and you will get a blessing. I about wanted to throw something at the TV. <laughs> but you realize these things are influencing people when they're really not what the Word of God really says. Now, there is a blessing that comes with giving. Don't put me wrong. But you can push it to the extreme. And the enemy is, is, being, is uh, coming in with all of this and allowing and influencing people the wrong direction with, you know, how did the devil tempt, how did Satan tempt Jesus? He actually quoted the word to him. Hello? Now, like I said, we choose what we allow to influence us. I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again. This man come up to dad and said, Brother Hagin, I want you to pray for me. I won't have no more trouble with the devil. And my dad, a lot of people thought they knew him, but they don't. But he, he sometimes was a little bit on the other side. And he looked at the man, and he said, You want me to pray that you'll die? And he said it in about that tone of voice, too. And the man said, Oh, 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 no. No, I don't mean that. And my dad said to him, well, let me tell you something, brother. As long, as long as we're on this earth, the enemy, the devil himself, is going to keep coming at you. You see, just because we've been born again, just because we're full of God, just because we're full of the Spirit of God, just because we have faith, it's not going to stop the devil from coming at you. And one of the best ways that he has of coming at you is to influence you from what you hear and see to get you thinking and talking and acting wrong. There's a little book back there in the bookstore, Bill, my dad called Right and Wrong Thinking. Right thinking will get you what God said you could have. Wrong thinking will get you what, what the devil wants you to have. And that's nothing but destruction. Come on now. Now, as the Lord told us in his word, you know, that we do not have to be influenced and motivated by the spirit of fear. Amen. And most of the, we can be influenced in other areas, but I want to talk, zero in on this, the spirit of fear. For, and we all know it, 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a sound mind. So we see that fear is a spirit. And you have to cast fear down. It's not of God. 
See, we've not been given a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. But many people are yielding in fear today because they don't understand the crazy world that's around them. I've probably lived longer than most people in this audience, and this world is not anything like I grew up in. And even some of you that are, are younger, the world is completely changed. It's completely different because it's been influenced by the God of this world, Satan himself. Okay? Why are the people fearful? Because they don't know what's going to happen next. If we stop and think about life yesteryear, so to speak, it pretty well just went along, everything. But today, there's some, there's some crazy something happening every day. People are fearful for their safety and well-being. Anymore, you got to be careful if you don't mean to but cut somebody off in traffic, they're liable to ram your car or take out a gun and shoot you. Hello? We used to never have any of that. Come on. Anybody understand what I'm trying to say to us today? We have to be careful of what is influencing our lives and stand against it according to the Word of God. You know, even some Christians are responding to fear in the things that's happening in the world that they hear in the news and that they see. They respond fearfully. Well, we need to keep our eyes and ears open, but we don't need to be influenced so that we respond in a negative way. We can respond in a positive way with the Word of God. Actually, yielding to the spirit of fear, but getting into fear allows devil, the enemy, the devil, to manipulate you into moving and doing things and saying things that you probably never would do. I'm not talking about sinning. You don't have to let the enemy manipulate you. In fact, we have a great offer that helps yes, that right there. The, the, you, when the enemy is coming after you, a CD by me, and it has a, a picture of a the lion. lion roaring there with his <laughs> teeth bared, and uh, that's what we're talking about. The, uh, the enemy coming after you to try to destroy you and manipulate you, but you don't have to have that. And then your faith, your mountain moving faith by my dad, your faith will see you through if you don't yes. give up. And, and you don't have to be stressed out. You don't have to be stressed out. You can navigate in life without stress. All of these are for a gift of $20 or more. Go right now to Raymond.org and order these. They will help you so that nothing can yes. keep you from receiving all the blessings that God said belongs to you. That's right. Well, this week, honey, we start a Living Faith Conference in Las, Ve uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Word of Life Christian Center, Pastors David and Vicki Sharon. Yep. Uh, that's March the, the 24th through the 26th. And then we go over to Chandler, Chandler Arizona. Arizona. That's right. 27th through the 29th at Faith Family Church, Pastors Andy and Deb White. Hey, if you know anybody in these areas, yes. or you are in that area yourself, come and be with us. It is going to be a great, great time. That's right. And then in April. Yes, Columbia, Tennessee. Uh, that's April the 7th through the 9th. At Trinity Family Church, Pastors Don and Debbie Ritchie. And then we are going to Raleigh, North Carolina, Victory Church at Pastors Mitch and Susan Horton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I said, rhema.org, you can find out our schedule for all of our rhema uh, living faith crusades that we go out at, conferences. Yes. I, I still got to learn how to say, say that word. Conference, yes. Conference. <laughs> yeah. 
And then Rama College Weekend, April the 12th through the 14th, right here on the Rama USA campus. You can find out all the information on rbtc.org. Yes. Yes. You know, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, then you need to know Him. Yes. You can't get in on all the benefits that we've been talking about today if you don't know Jesus. Maybe you know what it is to serve, but you, you just got off course and you need to rededicate your life. Yes. I want you to repeat this prayer after me with Lynette right now. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. I believe he came to this world. I believe he came to this world. And died for my sin on the cross. Died for my sin on the cross. And rose again from the dead. And rose again from the dead. I thank you, Father, that you said in your holy word. I thank you, Father, that you said in your holy word. That if I would believe these things in my heart. That if I would believe these things in my heart. And confess them with my mouth. And confess them with my mouth. I would be saved. I would be saved. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. And you heard me confess them with my mouth. And you heard me confess them with my mouth. And I thank you now. And I thank you now. That I'm a new person in Christ Jesus. That I'm a new person in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with us, would you just go to your device and go to testimony at rhema.org and let us know about it because we want to contact you and help you get started with your new life. Well, honey, I guess it's about time to get out of here. Yes, it is. <laughs> and I want to thank all of you that are our partners and you that will become our partners for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. We have the power of God inside of us, and if we will begin to demand our rights in Christ Jesus according to what the Bible says, then we don't have to wait for God to move. He's already moved. He's already done everything he's going to do about us defeating the devil. When the enemy is coming after you, a powerful CD by Kenneth W. Hagan. Learn what God's Word says about this all-important subject in the book, Mountain Moving Faith by Kenneth E. Hagan. And the CD, Navigating Life Without Stress by Lynette Hagan. Learn how to successfully navigate any stressful situation. The book and both CDs can be yours today for a gift of only $20 or more by calling toll-free 1-888-PRAISE-8 or log on anytime, day or night to order at rhema.org. For Canadian orders, log on at rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.